A call tonight for ASEAN and China to enhance agreements on free trade and air transport. The remarks by Prime Minister Li Xianlong come as the regional bloc and Beijing take dialogue relations to the next level at a special summit. Deborah Wong reports. Prime Minister Li's message is clear. Pandemic or not, trade and open dialogues must go on. Calling the ASEAN-China Free Trade Agreement the cornerstone of the relationship, Mr Li says an enhancement will boost economies and create new opportunities for workers in the region. At last month's ASEAN-China Summit, both sides launched a joint feasibility study to look into areas of cooperation. Mr Li is hoping it will be conducted expeditiously. We're seeing now a real growth of the digital economy and sustainability challenges. And China can be a major part of that discussion. That discussion from ASEAN is going on with other partners, including the USA. But China is also a country with a lot of digital players, some of which are already in the region. China is a country with a lot of strengths in the green economy and the green technologies. And I think these are future areas which China and ASEAN together should explore. Mr Lee is also looking forward to the upgrading of the ASEAN-China air transport agreement to support aviation and tourism industries. With countries in the region launching vaccinated travel lanes, Mr Lee says it's timely for ASEAN and China to discuss ways to restore cross-border travel progressively. He's the latest leader in the region to make such a call in recent months. But China's strict zero-COVID strategy means there needs to be common ground. Nonetheless, Associate Professor Te says the point was raised at a crucial moment. The commemorative summit brings President Xi to the table just after the plenum, where really has installed him with the person ultimately to decide things for China. This is really a step up and it also comes at a time where ASEAN, on its part, in its recent summit, has clearly signaled not just Singapore, but Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, they are all starting to open up. As for tensions in the South China Sea, Mr Lee says Singapore will continue working with China and other ASEAN members towards an effective code of conduct in accordance with universally recognised principles of international law. On the broader front, Mr Lee says external challenges remain. US-China relations, for instance, have an impact on regional peace. Mr Lee points out that ASEAN-led platforms can help foster constructive dialogue, trust and cooperation between key players in the region. But this requires the support of China and other partners to reinforce ASEAN centrality.